Hello and welcome to our channel Forensics for you. In today's video, we are going to discuss about classification, collection and analysis of paint evidence. First of all, let's talk about the classification of paints. On the basis of base or binder used, they are divided into oil paints, alkyd paints, latex paints and epoxy paints. Oil paints utilize a drying oil such as linseed oil or tongue oil that oxidizes and hardens to form a tough elastic film when exposed to air. Alkyd paints uses an alkyd resin as a binder. Alkyd resins are complex oil modified polyester that are generated by the reaction of vegetable oils, polybasic acids and polyhydric alcohols. These alkyd resins can be chemically modified soy or linseed oil. Alkyd paints provide water resistance, provide good adhesion to metal and are used for anti-rust coatings. Latex paints use acrylic resin such as polyethyl acrylate as a binder, which coalesces as water evaporates from the emulsion. Latex paints dry more quickly and once dry, they are water resistant. Latex paints are also resistant to flaking and peeling. Epoxy paints use epoxy resin as binders. These paints have increased resistance to corrosion, abrasion and chemicals. Automotive paints are the important evidence in hit and run cases. Because when any vehicular accident takes place, paint smears or chips come off the automobile and are usually found on the crime scene or victim's body. These being the trace evidence have the potential of linking the victim, suspect and the crime scene with each other. The automobiles are painted with different types of paints having varying layers. The automotive finishing system for a seal usually consists of at least four organic coatings. Electro coat primer, primer surfacer, base coat and clear coat. The first layer applied to the steel body of a car is the electrocoat primer. The primer, consisting of epoxy based resins, is electroplated on the steel body of the automobile to provide corrosion resistance. The resulting coating is uniform in appearance and thickness. The color of these electro deposition primers ranges from black to grey. Next layer is the primer surfacer. It is originally responsible for corrosion control. The surface usually follows the electro coat layer and is applied before the base coat. Primer surfacers are epoxy modified polyesters or urethanes. The function of this layer is to completely smooth out or hide any seams or imperfections because the color coat will be applied on the surface. This layer is highly pigmented. Colored pigments are used to minimize color contrast between primer and top coats. For example, a light gray primer may be used under pastel shades of the color top coat. A red oxide may be used under a dark color top coat. The next layer of paint on a car is base coat or color coat. This layer provides the color and aesthetics of the finish and represents the eye appeal of the finished automobile. The integrity of this layer depends on its ability to resist weather, UV radiation and acid rain. Most commonly, an acrylic based polymer comprises the binder system of base coats. Interestingly, the choice of automotive pigments is dictated by toxic and environmental concerns. Thus, the use of lead, chrome and other heavy metal pigments have been abandoned in favor of organic based pigments. There is also a growing trend toward pearl, luster or mica pigments. Mica pigments are coated with layers of metal oxide to generate interference colors. Also, the addition of aluminum flakes to automotive paint imparts a metallic look to the paint's finish. An unpigmented clear coat is applied to improve gloss, durability and appearance. Most clear coats are acrylic based but polyurethane clear coats are increasing in popularity. 
these top coats provide outstanding edge resistance and appearance. As we have already seen, paint chips are most likely to be found on or near people or objects involved in hit and run incidents. The recovery of loose paint chips from a garment or from the road surface must be done with utmost care to keep the paint chip intact. Paint chips may be picked up with the tweezers or scooped up with a piece of paper. Paper druggist folds or glass or plastic vials make excellent containers for paint. If the paint is smeared or is embedded in garments or objects, the investigator should not attempt to remove it. Instead, it is best to package the whole item carefully and send it to the laboratory for examination. When a transfer of paint occurs in hit and run situations, such as to the clothing of a pedestrian victim, uncontaminated standard or reference paint must always be collected from the undamaged area of the vehicle for comparison in the laboratory. It is particularly important that collected paint be closed to the area of the car that was suspected of being in contact with the victim. This is necessary because other portions of the car may have faded or been repainted. Standard or reference samples are always removed so as to include all the paint layers down to the bare metal. This is best accomplished by removing a painted section with clean scalpel or knife blade. Each sample should be separately packaged and marked with the exact location of its recovery. When a cross transfer of paint occurs between two vehicles, again all the layers including the foreign as well as the underlying original paints must be removed from each vehicle. A standard or reference sample from adjacent undamaged area of the vehicle must also be taken in such cases. Microscopic examination of paints. The microscope has traditionally been and remains the most important instrument for locating and comparing paint specimens. Considering the thousands of paint colors and shades, it is quite understandable why color more than any other property imparts paint with its most distinctive forensic characteristics. Questioned and known specimens are best compared side by side under a stereoscopic microscope for color, surface texture and color layer sequence. Analysis of paint evidence the wide variation in binder formulations in automobile finishes provides particularly significant information. More important, paint manufacturers make automobile finishes in hundreds of varieties. This knowledge is most helpful to a criminalist who is trying to associate a paint chip with one car as distinguished from the thousands of similar models that have been produced in any one year. Characterization of paint binders Pyrolysis gas chromatography has proven to be a particularly invaluable technique for distinguishing most paint formulations. In this process, paint chips as small as 20 micrograms are decomposed by heat into numerous gaseous products and are sent through a gas chromatograph. The polymer chain is decomposed by a heated filament and the resultant products are swept into and through a gas chromatograph column. The separated decomposition products of the polymer emerge and are recorded. The pattern of this chromatogram or pyrogram distinguishes one polymer from another. The result is a pyrogram that is sufficiently detailed to reflect the chemical makeup of the binder. Another technique that provides information about the binder composition of paint is infrared spectrophotometry. Binders selectively absorb infrared radiation to yield a spectrum that is highly characteristic of a paint specimen. Characterization of pigments The elements that constitute the inorganic pigments of paint can be identified by a variety of techniques such as 
emission spectroscopy, inductively coupled plasma, and X-ray spectroscopy. The emission spectrograph, for instance, can simultaneously detect 15 to 20 elements in most automobile paints. Some of these elements are relatively common to all paints and have little forensic value. Others are less frequently encountered and provide excellent points of comparison between paint specimens. If you like the video today, do let us know in the comment section. Do not forget to hit like and share this video. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.